go hey guys welcome back to sports bar uh, we'll be talking about football and uh, we'll first start uh, start talking about the bottom half of the premier league teams uh, i think we people should take on from here okay so this is the document which i created you know this is uh, when i created the youtube video for uh, premier league premier league predictions at the start of the season so i launched that original document but i had all the standings and i you know i had written it somewhere what uh, what will be the position so i just copy pasted it and created a new document so this is the predictions that i, I had uh, i think so after two or three games into the season uh, so i predicted norwich to finish bottom but the uh, that time you know daniel farke was uh, in charge of norwich and uh, no that norwich team you know daniel farke uh, that was good uh, his team was good for uh, championship but uh, when it came to the premier league i th- i don't know what happened they just sort of you know uh, were considering go left right center uh, they lost m uh, buendia as well uh, so their main creator they lost him uh, so now uh, they sacked him and they have replaced him with uh, uh, i think dean smith who was the former coach of aston villa uh so i guess you know he has brought some stability uh, i think so they won their first game uh, i think uh, under uh, under dean smith's uh, reign they won the first game 2-1 against southampton so there were some you know defensive defensive stabilities uh, in that team uh, so i you know expect them not to finish bottom i think so relegation would is probably you know what you can say uh, uh impossible to avoid for them uh, but uh, you know they might do well at least not for 20th finish uh, 20 uh, 20th place that i have here Uh, on 19th, you know, I have uh, kept Watford. So Watford, what was the problem? Uh, so the problem with Watford is uh, they had a good start, of the, uh, good start to the season. Uh, I think so. They had seven points from the seven games, first seven games, and I don't know what happened. Watford board, you know, suddenly decided to, you know, decided to sack their coach, uh, Zico Munez, who did a really good job with the team. I don't know why they sacked him, uh, and they bought him Cla- Claudio Ranieri, as we all know. Am I? Do you know who Claudio Claudio Ranieri is? Not really. actually he was the leicester uh, manager who won when leicester won that uh, t- uh, title in 2015 2016 so he was that okay, okay 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 so they bought him and uh, after that you know i think so he has only managed to get one victory if i am not wrong against that manchester united 4-1 victory so i think their relegation bound uh, newcastle uh, bro you uh, am i would you like to talk little about newcastle about that deal with honestly Newcastle. speaking i do not have much hopes about this newcastle team right now but uh, this january transfer window uh, might be game changing and uh, if they you know manage to get those big signings which they might uh, i read somewhere that they are eyeing for asensio they are you know uh, eyeing for those big players if they manage to get those players in their team and uh, might you know have a small rebuild in the middle of the season then they uh, they might skip their relegation uh, this year and uh, they can have a brand new start for for the next season because we all know that uh, they've been taken over by the uh, arab merchants so they have hopes so they have a lot of homework to do in this transfer window if they get it right then i'm sure they'll uh, avoid that relegation zone and uh, next year they'll have a brand new start and we might actually have a team act- that is actually competing for you know mm. for the european spot or the mid table or if they you know get A lot of things, right? Then even the title. So that's what I think about Newcastle right now. Uh, see the new the so I will you know just talk a little bit about Newcastle. Uh, they bought in Eddie Howe. They sacked Dusty the Blues. They bought in Eddie Howe, who you know who was one of the you know what you can say uh, very decent manager, not decent uh, above decent you know above average manager. He was really good at Bournemouth. You know everyone commended him for keeping that Bournemouth team for five years in the Premier League. uh and you know they have bought him now uh, and so uh, regarding players you know, i should i think they should go for uh, you know players who you know like uh, probably like you know someone like anthony marshall everybody is talking about you know uh, the, they should go for players like who are not playing who are, who are part of the big team but you know not proper playing 11 like asensio like uh, amesh asensio who you know he is a big team player like for real madrid but he does not play uh, every time you know so he is uh, just a fringe member or rotation rotation member you can say so they should go for them Uh, Burnley, I will not talk anything about Burnley. Just say two words: Sean Dyche. He's going to keep uh, keep them up. Crystal Palace. Uh, pa- when Patrick Vieira took over Crystal Palace, I thought I had some doubts, but after looking at the, uh, looking at you know the the play play at least you know at least for for you know previous three four games uh, not previous three four games before that, uh, they were really 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 playing you know exceptional football. Am I? Do you know Crystal Palace defeated Man City two nil in this season at ATI? Yes. Yes. So you know they have uh, players like Conor Gallagher, who you know who has been really good for them. Uh, he's a Chelsea loney, so look out for him. He's a Chelsea loney. Uh, then they have Mark Gray, again another Chelsea loney. 
uh so i think so crystal palace should finish above that uh, southampton you know i have a little bit worry about southampton southampton i think you know they are relegation bounded they are not playing at all at all well uh they lost dannings so they lost you know one of their main goal scorer to aston villa so they are miss, uh, missing him brentford i think brentford are here to stay uh they are going to stay in the premier league this year i, I confidently feel about that uh, i watched the uh, game against watford uh today uh, they you know they were one nil down for most of the part uh, then they scored in the 85th minute then they scored the pen then they achieved a last minute penalty you know basically in the 94th minute 95th minute they got a penalty with the conversion so i think you know they have that heart and uh, uh, i don't know am i if you have watched the game against liverpool benfield versus liverpool that means three, three all uh, that was uh, one of the amazing games you know uh, finishing you know mm-hmm. getting a draw against liverpool is probably you know you can say a nil nil draw one one draw is cheeky draw but they got a 3-3 draw So that shows you know how much uh, how much you know what you can say attacking mentality from the team. Yes, attacking mentality of the team can be shown here. So I think they are here to stay. Uh, Leeds, everyone was talking about Leeds, saying that they might have the second season syndrome. Uh, they might you know they get relegated, and uh, I kind of agree because uh, players might have got for a little bit fatigued after playing you know uh, because Marcelo Bielsa likes his team to play with a high a high intensity. Everyone you know he uh, or probably you know. He demands more from them. Am I? Do you have? Have you heard about murder ball? No. Okay. So murder ball is a technique. You know, it's it's a it's an eleven 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 v eleven game. Uh, uh, where for uh, twenty minutes, where you know you have to constantly run. You don't have to stay. Uh, you are not allowed to stop. You have to constantly constantly run. Uh, the so all the coaching staff, you know, they are outside outside the field. As soon as the ball goes outside the field, they put it inside back and so that there's no rest. And you have to do it for twenty five thirty minutes, I guess. uh so this is a training regime that leads players follow so i guess you know you can say they might be exhausted for uh, fatigue but i still feel you know probably they might not finish 13 like right? i have said they could probably finish 16th 17th but uh, they are here to stay and they are going to stay uh, brighton uh, if you you know what you can say if you want to have a neutral team or you know it's a second team in the premier league uh, brighton is your go uh, they have a great manager in graham potter again another you know english premier manager uh, everyone you know praises uh, praises his team everyone likes how they play Uh, just one thing, you know. Pro- probably, you know, just get a goal scorer. Uh, Neil Mopey, I don't think he's a good, uh, he's a great striker for Brighton. Uh, get a goal scorer. You create, they create a lot of chances, but uh, not able to convert them. Uh, so get a goal scorer in. Uh, Wolves. Uh, when I watched the Wolves in the start of the season, uh, I was pretty impressed by them. Uh, you know, they lost the first three games, but that front three, Trincao. Uh, then they had Rahul Jimenez, who is their main striker, and Adama Traore. that front three was really dynamic you know they were uh, really attacking minded and they uh, tinkau he is you know i think so he is from barcelona he is a barcelona loni i guess uh he is very slick on the ball you know he is very you know, good to watch when he has the ball but the only problem is his finishing is not good and uh, the second thing is uh, he is over reliant on his left foot if he you know develops something from the right foot as well uh, probably you know try to try to you know what you can say try to cross from right foot then he can become a, a good player not a probably not a top player but a good player for a good good mid table side uh everton everton start to the season was really good uh, they had richardson they had uh, dominic carvalho lewin they had demari gray they had townsend they had dukure so you know all of the players you know but the uh, suddenly an injury to richardson one of the striker uh, not not richardson yeah richardson was also injured but he is now back uh, dominic carvalho lewin they are heavily missing him because he creates you know he's sort of a striker you know who can uh pull players you know who can stretch the defense who can you know attract players towards him who can you know really you know cause cause a chaos for a player someone like richardson who's coming from the right demari gray who's coming from the le- left uh to cause problem demari gray you know if you want to watch someone you know who is young who is quick who is you know very really attacking attacking minded what demari gray he's one of the best player at everton and uh, i would probably you know want to write about him but i will you know after probably after the isl is little bit uh, calm down I would probably you know write an uh, write an article about Demari Gray and talking about his attacking game. Uh, so am I bad Arsenal now? Do you want to talk about anything about Arsenal? Honestly speaking, initially when Arsenal lost those uh, first three games, I really thought that uh, you know Arteta is being backed unnecessarily and uh, you know Arsenal might probably be making a mistake. But after that, Arsenal been Arsenal is doing really well. Uh, they are they are at seventh position, I guess, right now. They they still have a long way to go, but uh, I'm sure Arteta might be eyeing that European spot. Like I said, it's it's uh, can't really say a lot of things right now. But uh, since they are doing really well, 
uh, they are a decent team and i am hoping that they get that european spot which they are eyeing and if that happens then maybe next season they can you know uh, buy even bigger stars and uh, better signings might uh, do a lot of good things for arsenal so yeah that's what i am thinking about them uh, so you know i would like to talk about arsenal uh, you said that uh, they were on a good run Uh, they defeated no so i will just tell what the what the run was so they defeated norwich 1-0 uh, they defeated burnley one burnley 1-0 they defeated watford 1-0 uh, i guess they drew crystal palace 2-2 uh, they defeated aston villa 3-1 uh, they defeated uh, leicester city uh, 2-0 uh, so there were a lot of you know what you can say uh, lower uh, relegation relegation for that obviously watford you know norwich Uh, they were uh, uh, Burnley. They were not good at that time. They are relegation rele- relegation candidate, uh, beating you know uh, it is what you can say demanded. It is you know, expected from Arsenal to beat them, and they beated them. But you know uh, I think so the two notable victories were Aston Villa three one. But again Aston Villa Dean Smith was really struggling with that Aston Villa team. It was not Steven Gerrard's team by 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 the back then. It was the uh, Dean Smith was in charge, and that Aston 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 Villa team was really struggling. and against leicester you know that was uh, you know i would like to say that that was not a clean victory because arsenal only dominated for what you can say 15 20 minutes and leicester were what you can say quite uh, what probably you know everyone said that they are not waken up uh, waken up after in the morning they were probably asleep during the game uh, when the kick off started and after 15 minutes you know they woke to, after you know considering those two goals they suddenly woke up So that was not a honestly speaking say. the only uh, arsenal game i was really disappointed was one against everton if you might remember yes. they lost 2-1 to everton and uh, both the goals came very late uh, you know arsenal were like one nil up i saw martin odegaard scoring a goal i guess uh, in 45th or something minute during the dying uh, you know dying period of the first half and uh, i thought things are finally going well for arsenal in the game Uh, but then you know in 80th or something like that minute richarlison came and he scored in the goal and uh, then things started going downhill for arsenal and another goal came in a 90 plus minute and uh, you know it just shattered their de- dreams uh, i really thought arsenal was doing well it was their latest game but uh, yeah so you know i was coming coming on to that game only uh, everton game if you watch that game you know closely uh, if you full watch the full 90 minutes Arsenal were not dominant in that game, you know. Uh, you expect, you know, you are oh, obviously are away from home, but you are playing against Everton, who is who are really struggling. You know, I think so. The last they were, uh, won was, uh, I think so, back in the September, the September month that they had probably won a Premier League game. Uh, it was a long time that they have been losing, drawing, losing, drawing, well, mostly losing, uh, drawing here and few, you know, one or two games. So you know, you really expect someone like Arsenal, you know, to go over there. to take the game game by the scuff of the neck and you know to, to put a dominant performance over there even though it's an away even though you are playing at goodison park but you really expect uh, from a team you know that is high up on the table to really you know go go somewhere like everton who are you know dangling down who are you know really you know struggling and do, play, dom- play dominantly but i think so uh, i think so you know, ateta is going a little bit more defensive you know uh the same problem that i you know saw with unai the conservative approach uh, yes sir. that's the same problem i saw with unai you know he used to you know what you can say uh, his team you know they used to score the goal and they used to just sit back you know soak the pressure soak the pressure even at the home as well uh probably you know, i uh, so they were you know just scoring a goal and then sit back park the bus even at the uh, even at the ms against teams like bournemouth like like such so you know this is not the arsenal way uh, maybe this might be the you know the way when if you play for someone like leeds who are playing match city or probably southampton the this might work there but it's not going to work at arsenal and if he's going to play like this then probably i don't want him at arsenal or uh, probably uh, no one would want him you know anywhere if he's playing like this at a top club so uh, try and you know be better you know try to what you can say dominate more uh, the team is good they have a lot of young players ben white is there or uh, probably you know the whole team uh, probably barring lacazette and obameyang you know everyone is below 25 or you know just uh, or you can say they have to reach their peak uh, 24 25 years old everyone is so there's a lot of potential there uh, probably do a good work probably not a top four finish but at least get someone here you know, fifth and sixth at least get some european football next season aston villa so am i would you like to break the news about aston villa uh yeah the news is that aston villa have hired a new manager in form of steven gerrard uh, who's got a brand new start uh, at the team and uh, he's doing really well i mean you know that's what aston villa uh, fans also wanted they wanted someone new they wanted you know someone to uh, you know break those barriers and uh, you know get get the team winning and that's what he's doing 
so yeah i'm happy for them but uh, it's not like they are you know really up the table they are still in, in the uh, bottom half but uh, i'm sure they'll do well i'm at least hoping that they uh, get to 8th or 10th position so that would be good for to start Uh, you know, if you want to watch uh, what uh, Steven Gerrard has done to Aston Villa, mm-hmm. and I would suggest a game uh, Aston Villa when Aston Villa played Manchester City at home, they lost two one. But the character that they showed in the second half, you know, uh, Man City totally dominated for the first half. Uh, they were two goals up, and I thought, man, I thought ki this might be, you know, what you can say, uh, realistic check for Aston Aston Villa and Steven G. A realistic check, you know, to say that the Premier League is really hard. It is difficult to manage in the Premier League. But the way that the team came in the second half, you know, and got the goal in the just, you know, I think so. It was, I think so, under under two minutes. What kids? Uh, yes, only one kids. Uh, it was under two minutes in the second half, you know, and I thought, man, this is something different, you know. This Aston Villa, you know, they are not going to back down, even if they are two nil down, even if they are getting pumped, they are not going to back down. And I think so, you know, the runs they had, uh, they lifted, I think, so Crystal Palace two nil, which was again a hard fought victory. Crystal Palace are not a bad team for Aston Villa. Uh, Brighton again, they defeated Brighton two nil. Uh, that those were again uh, two late goals, uh, one from Oliver Twins and one I don't remember who scored. Uh, and uh, the one player, uh, the one standout player that Aston Villa have right now is John McGinn. Everyone said that uh, he is going to be, you know, what you can say, he is going to flourish under uh, Stevie G because uh, he is the kind of player that he really likes, and that is what is happening. You know, uh, John McGinn has been really, uh, what you can say, a great uh, addition to the team. If we uh, if we talk about both attacking and defensive way. He is supporting the team in both the manners. He is putting into the uh, courses in you know, a dangerous area. He is moving forward. He scored a late goal against Crystal Palace, which uh, sealed their victory. And against Leicester as well, uh, uh, they are playing exceptionally well. And I, you know, hope uh, they do uh, good things. Uh, I think so. I was right about them finishing eighth, and I might be right. Uh, so Leicester City, uh, might they, did you did you watch some Leicester City games this year? No, not really. Okay, so I will just talk about Leicester City. Uh, they lost their uh, centre back Wesley Fofana, who is. Was really good, you know. I really liked him. Uh, was someone you know, he was really young, but someone you know who was an aggressive defender. I would like to say, uh, someone like you know, uh, probably not Ramos like, but uh, you can you know, if once he you know goes. You know, Wesley goes, Fofana was also linked to Real Madrid, so it's the quality you know he brings into the side that mentality and uh, that is what made him a big player. So yeah. Yes. So I think so. He's gone for the Premier League this season. So Leicester City really struggled uh, in in the centre back position, but now. Uh, I also did not watch much game. I watched that match, Man, Man United one where they defeated four uh, two. So Brendan Rodgers is currently struggling with uh, this Leicester City, and I watched that game uh, this weekend. This week, I think so. They played Napoli in the Europa League, and I watched that. Uh, there were a lot of you know defensive errors, which uh, again uh, Johnny Evans and Soyuncu. They are not uh, what you can say a great centre back pairing. Uh, Soyuncu and Fofana was a great centre back pairing. Uh, Johnny Evans is getting old. He was a former Manchester United player. He is getting old. Uh, Wadi, they are not providing. You know, Wadi, they are not giving that service that they gave to Wadi few seasons back. Again, again, uh, he is not getting old. It is just the service is not uh, good for good to him. So yeah, that uh, probably you know I would talk about Leicester City more in some another video. Uh, right now we'll move on to West Ham. Am I? Uh, did you watch some West Ham? Uh, yeah, I did watch uh, a few West Ham games initially, and uh, I think David Moyes is doing a great job with this West Ham team. Uh, if the season ends today, they are they are guaranteed a European spot that too in in the UCL. So West Ham at four is a really good thing. They've got you know experience in form of Lucas, uh, you know Fabianski in the goal, and uh, then big players like Kurt Zuma, uh, who's solid in the defense. You know he's played almost all the games, and uh, yeah, like I said, he was solid in the defense. So yeah, I'm sure uh, if they continue doing this well, they'll play the European football next season. I'm at least hoping uh, that they, you know, uh, secure a Europa League spot, if not the UEFA Champions League, which might actually be difficult. Mm. But uh, UEFA UCL is uh, uh, sorry, UEFA UEL is very realistic, and uh, that is what I'm hoping West Ham. That is what I expect from them. Uh, did you know that they defeated two of the three teams that are in the top three, uh, three two? Yes, yes. Liverpool three two and Chelsea three two. Uh, they played Chelsea well against two. Manchester City as well. They lost two one, but I think so. It was at that at that at that year. Uh, so you know this shows that uh, these are not a they this is not a fluke team. Uh, uh, you know probably you know we would like to you know do justice to West Ham by putting it uh, by making a separate video. A separate you know, six seven minutes we were talking about the players talking about the style tactics, mm-hmm. but right now you know I feel you know West Ham can break into top four. 
but they you know they, they would really need a player like Mikel Antonio uh, probably you know uh, he should be fit Kurzuma should be fit Declan Rice should be you know they are all dependent on this player uh, if one of these players you know, at least Mikel Antonio gets injured then their uh, front line is going to struggle uh, Declan Rice is another good player uh, if you get a time you should probably you know watch him he's going to join a big club soon I, I remember he's going to join a big club soon uh, everyone said that last year you know, they are going to struggle and uh, I think so they have proved everyone wrong and uh, do you do you do you want to say Jesse Lingard in West Ham again? Uh, yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, he's played for them. He he knows the environment of the club. The fans love him. So, yeah, would be a great addition you know, I for the want team him because uh, uh, they have Pablo Fornals. Uh, they switch between Pablo Fornals and Manuel Lanzini. Uh, both of them are different players. Pablo Fornals like to move forward. You know, he's you know, like to play as a second striker. Whereas Manuel Lanzini likes to drop deep, he, you know, he, he likes to collect his ball, collect the ball from his centre mids, from the centre defence, they are probably the centre defence. Uh, so, you know, probably Jesse Lingard would probably start on the left side, Jared Bowen on the right, uh, Lanzini in the middle or someone else in the middle. Uh, so, you know, probably, you know, talking about West Ham, uh, it, might, it might take, you know, probably 20-30 minutes to talk about West Ham, so we'll probably do it in a, uh, another video. Uh, we'll talk about Spurs, am I? Uh, can you kick out, kick out, kick off about Spurs, something? Yeah, uh, Spurs have appointed Antonio Conte as uh, their manager and I think some uh, a character like Antonio Conte is perfect for them. You know, he's not someone, uh, you know, who's going to back just because of a few egos in the team. He's, he's someone who's going to make, uh, who's going to make uh, his players run and uh, that's what I'm hoping for him to do. At this point of time, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult to judge them. Uh, I think I should give them more games and uh, see exactly where they are supposed to stand, the way they are playing. Uh, at the moment, they are fifth in the Premier League table, but uh, I st I'd still like to watch a more, uh, you know, more of them and uh, probably get a clearer picture. Uh, you know, I am of the same opinion as you. Uh, I have also not watched Spurs, you know, since I think so I just watched one game uh, with when Conte was in charge. That was uh, the Spurs Everton one, which was which finished nil nil. So I just watched that game. Other than that, I did not get much chance to watch the Spurs. Uh, I would to be honest, watch. they also had two of their games postponed, so we can't really talk yeah, a lot about. One, I think and, so uh, it, against... those games were against, uh, I think Burnley and uh, I guess Norwich or some team. So uh, yes, yeah. uh, they got one game postponed because of heavy snow. Uh, that was against Burnley. Uh, one game mm -hmm. got postponed. But that was in the Europa Conference League. That was against uh, then uh, then uh, the Sp the French team then. Uh, and uh, again, the, their their game is against postponed. Uh, this they, this Sunday, I think tomorrow they had game against Brighton, uh, Brighton, Brighton. That is also postponed because mm -hmm. of COVID outbreak. So hoping you know, I, I was really looking forward for that Spurs Brighton because that would have been a real test. Uh, Potter versus Conte, uh, kind of a similar you know uh, similar game plan, but uh, you know uh, all fullbacks like to push forward. You know they have uh, what you can same uh, same uh, same what you can say philosophy in the of the game. Uh, both teams like to you know, stay, like to say, have the same structure. Three four two one. Brighton also plays three four two one. Kind of similar players, you know. Uh, so I was really looking forward to that, and that was, you know, probably I would like to say, if Conte is, you know, first real test was that Brighton game, and that was postponed. So it's really bad. Uh, so we'll move on to Manchester United. Am I? Uh, you are probably second favorite team, second or third favorite team. Of course, and uh, so United have hired a new coach. Mm -hmm. They've sacked Ole Gunnar uh, finally. Uh, so. Uh, I've heard something new this time and it's something like Ragnik Ball. I did not have an opportunity to watch them. Uh, you know, the Champions League game I wanted to, but uh, of course, you know, Real Madrid was playing. Mm. Sorry, Barcelona was playing uh, mm. Bayern Munich, so I watched that game. Mm. So, all I know is that he likes a 4-2-2-2 approach. Mm. So, you know, he, he and, and he likes uh, to make his player runs. Uh, he has a gegenpress type of approach. So, it's going to be important for all the players to start pressing. So, we might actually see Cristiano Ronaldo uh, running a lot this time because, you know, everybody uh, is saying that he's Cristiano Ronaldo. He does not have to run. All he has to do is, you know, wait near the goal and he'll get the ball and he'll convert that. That's what he's been doing and, uh, you know, we can't really blame him because he's really good at doing that job. Also, he's 36 years old and it does not really make sense to ask him to run a lot. But this, but we all know that you know Ronaldo has a big work ethic and uh, he does not you know shy away from uh, trying new things and working hard. So when Ronaldo is fit and he's back into the team, uh, it will be interesting to see if he actually you know fits in his approach, uh, you know the manager's approach and uh, runs if he's asked to and runs a lot. So 
that's what i'm you know waiting to see uh, so you know the couple of things that uh, like you know really likes to just give me a <coughs> sorry for the, sorry for that so you know a couple of things that uh, like nick you know really likes to uh, really would bring to manchester united is first is the character uh, he is you know some sort you know that uh, what you can say is not egoistic i would not like to say egoistic but someone you know who demands a lot from the team uh, he clearly has an idea you know he clearly says that his philosophy is uh, if you are a manager I means he, 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 he it is his words if you are a manager or if you are a football coach or something like that Uh, you should have a clear image of image in your mind you know how you t- how you everyone want, how you know how you want your team to play and that is you know what you can say is uh, mantra behind the behind the success coach behind the success and behind the footballing mind uh, that is his mantra and uh, the second thing he would like he would bring is stability uh, stability because uh, he is just an interim manager he is just there for the 6 months for till end of the season and after that he is going to take on a te- technical uh, some consultancy role uh, in that in that club so he just there for 6 mm-hmm. months uh, so he is going to bring stability in that uh, club and third thing is you know that everyone criticize about is uh, off the ball movement of the players you know so he he's the, he's, he's the one you know the the, the, the thing you mentioned greg and pressing so he is you know mm-hmm. going to tell players you know to uh, what you can say uh, aggressively press forward uh, you know move as a team you know not press as an individual but press as a team uh, collectively win the ball high up the pitch as possible and another thing you know tactically that he usually likes is to you know be uh, direct and straight forward means you know he would you know uh, force his player you know to uh, move uh, what you can say move the ball forward as quickly as possible get the ball uh, away from the goal as quickly as possible and uh, you know he really likes you know t- uh, to be very fast and slick football means uh, one to touch and the ball should go uh, for forward means every time you know not no back passing just move forward just move forward because again one if you don't attack you are not going to score he is you know what you can say opposite of what pep uh, pep is doing and the team that liverpool liverpool team or the chelsea team you know uh, they are all you know what you can say he- heavily uh, what you can say means uh, that flagnik is like uh, what you can say um, idol for uh, not idol but uh, what you can say um uh, he has uh, you know top has been uh, adapted adapt- adapted you know i would just go for adapted a uh, club and took you know adapted a lot from the lagnik uh, lagnik ball Uh, that is again pressing and all that was invented by not invented but you know probably you know, i can say invented because i have heard that he was the first one to implement all the system in germany so you can say that he was the one of the you know four founding uh, inventors of the gegen pressing so yeah that's what uh, i have to say about life like nick we probably you know what honestly more. speaking it takes it takes a lot of stamina to be able mm-hmm. to uh, you know successfully implement gegen pressing it's like one player has the ball and uh, all your players are going to run behind that player as if uh, you know hmm. as if i don't know what and you know what happens is when the player with the ball it becomes difficult for him uh, to you know choose a person to pass hmm. because you have players running towards you from all the directions that is one way and the other uh, way is that you know when one player has the ball the other players are just going to you know cut off those passing lanes hmm. so if ronaldo has the ball and uh, he he is trying to make a pass uh, to uh, say bruno fernandes then uh, then gegen uh, in gegen pressing you know uh, like you mentioned klopp klopp will have at least one player hmm. uh, who is going to be uh, near bruno fernandes so that option uh, will be difficult for ronaldo to pass because if he tries then uh, uh, you know the player might cut the ball hmm. so ronaldo will try to pass to some other player and even the other player will also have someone who is surrounding him and then it will become difficult for ronaldo to pass so the only option he'll have is try try an air ball or try to dribble pass which is again difficult so and to do that it takes a lot of stamina so it happens in small periods like 30 seconds to 2 minutes in those in that small period teams will just try to uh, take away the ball and uh, then continue the game ahead but uh, then it also has it it's a set of disadvantages it is that you know teams often lose their shape in this so mm-hmm. that's what he'll have to take care about and i'm sure he does if he does that well liverpool will again be the favorites to win the uh, premier league title which they already are you know this is where you know pressing as a team comes uh, comes you know you don't press as an individual you press as a team mm-hmm. as a whole team so that you know the that, that that you talked about you know, the structure getting broke down uh, gaps mm-hmm. that you leaving uh, gaps leaving that is where you know you press as a team uh if you press other team you know it becomes very difficult you know for uh, for players to find those passes and to break through your defenses so i hope that he might do uh, well with uh, Ma- manchester united because premier league is a diff- really you know really physical really physically harsh harsh league to play and it demands a lot from the players so 
it will be interesting to see you know how he is gegen pressing uh, works at, at liverpool so you know we'll move from uh, manchester united you know from one german manager to another german manager that is liverpool am i would like to talk something about liverpool uh see liverpool at the moment uh, they are doing re- really well like i said they are among the favorites to win they are just one point behind manchester city who are the table toppers uh, mohammed salah again mm. as usual uh, he is scoring a lot of goals he is in the form of his life uh, even mohammed salah came in 2017 18 season uh, or either 18 19 whatever people thought that he was just one season wonder and uh, he's not just he's not going to team uh, take his team uh, far but uh, everyone has been proved wrong he's been scoring lot of goals i think he scored like uh, 13 or 14 goals mm. in, in the premier league itself and uh, apart from that even in the champions league liverpool uh, were the table toppers of uh, their respective group so liverpool as a unit they're doing really well they just have to continue doing that and uh, we might actually see liverpool lifting the trophy again who knows uh, you know the one thing that i have seen with liverpool you know that they have changed and that is uh, visible on the pitches Uh, Salah and Mane you know start really wide uh, last season they were you know uh, standing they were uh, what you can say playing those half spaces but now you know, they have really pushed the uh, push wide uh, one thing uh, it is kind of a back thing you know Robertson doesn't like to push much forward unless and until you know the ball is in the final third he doesn't move forward unless and until the ball is in the third final third uh, so that gets a back three so defensively you know uh, they there are three players Robertson is there uh, Van Dijk in the middle Matip uh, Matip or any other center back who's playing that is on the right side uh tent alexander arnold has moved into some sort of a number 8 uh, you know he's a right back but you know so, uh, during build up his plays as a number 8 uh, and uh, uh man salah is on the uh, on the flank uh, probably you know it is very difficult to explain without you know uh, without any ball or what but just you know stay stick with me and uh, as soon as the ball move forwards you know uh, jordan henderson also moves you know slightly moves towards that uh, right side to form a passing triangle between uh, tent alexander arnold henderson and uh, salah and sala you know initially he starts from the flank then he try to move inward uh tent alexander moves in tent alexander uh, alexander arnold you know he moves onto that flank uh sala cuts inside and henderson you know who was uh, in sort of that uh, half space he you know moves centrally and just you know stays close to that uh, center the uh, center box and that is why you know how the jordan henderson has been scoring goals he scored that against uh, uh, ac milan you know that 3-2 win that they had in the first game He scored over there. Then he scored another beauty with uh, Ever- against Everton. So you know this is what you know they have changed. That Salah starts from the wide. Salah starts from the wide. Comes there into the middle. Uh, uh, as a tent, as a no starts from the middle. He goes outside. And uh, you know with three players, you know Robertson doesn't like to push much forward. So he with three players in the back, you know that gives more opportunity for players like Fabinho or Thiago or maybe you know Oxley Chamberlain or uh, any other player, uh, Naby Keita, to you know move forward uh, to you know uh, join attack. because in you know, last year it really looked like you know everything everyone is depending on salah or probably you know jota to score but right now you know with all these players moving forward uh, with the midfielder moving forward they what they do is they have numerical advantage uh, on all the on all the sides you know they have numerical advantage on the flanks they have numerical advantage in the center on the right flank everywhere you know they have uh, numbers to pass into and that's why you know they they like to they are you know able to play for as much in the opposition half rather than their own half So this has been, you know, really uh, what do I say? A, a little bit tweak from Jurgen Klopp that has, you know, made Liverpool more uh, more destructible than they were in the last season. And everyone thought, you know, they might, you know, uh, what you can say, uh, this team has, you know, had success. What is there to play for? But now, with this, you know, little tweaks, you know, they have found new rhythm. And this, you know, clearly looks like that uh, Liverpool team, you know, that won the Champions League and the Premier League. Exactly. So should we move on Manchester City now? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I think you should start, and okay. I'll continue. Okay, so Man City, you know, uh, one one player I would like to talk about, you know, first of all, uh, before the discussing about the tax and all, uh, is Bernardo Silva. Uh, before I think so, you know, during the st- transfer window, correct, correct. Uh, he, you know, he wanted to leave the team uh, as you know they signed Grealish, they ordered it. so they had so after signing Grealish, you know, they had Grealish, uh, they had Mahrez, they had Foden, they had De Bruyne. uh then they had gabriel jesus they had sterling you know they had lot of uh, you know options they had gundogan uh, you know i'm talking about attack and midfield where bernardo silva can play so there are so many players that you know i uh, bernardo silva thought that i might not get uh, much time to play and he was you know trying to uh, play, trying to you know get a transfer out of manchester city but right now you know i feel you know if salah was not playing in the premier league 
I would have said that uh, the Premier League's best player would be Bernardo Silva, but Salah is also there. So there might be an argument, there might be a debate between Salah and Bernardo Silva, who should be the player of the season. But right now, you know, both of them are for me right now. You know, if if we can, then probably you know share the award. But let's see, the season is big. So Bernardo Silva, you know, I would like to what I would like to say is, if you watch, you know, a lot uh, of people actually, you know, underrated Bernardo Silva initially in the season, and uh, he's repaid them back. Hmm. Scored about six or seven games. Of course, those two, uh, uh, one of those goals was scored against Manchester United. He was everywhere on the pitch that day. Uh, so, so yeah, you're that, right. So that is what I'm what I got to say. That he is everywhere on the pitch. Means you know, uh, during build up, he's you know, uh, he's uh, he's in line with Rodley. You know, he's playing as a number six. As 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 the play moves forward, you know, as Manchester United move the ball from defense to attack, he slowly you know ventures out. Uh, then you know, uh, during the build up play, he's playing as a number six. Then once the ball moves forward into the midfield, then he drifts out to play as a number eight or as a winger. And once the ball is in the final third, then he you know moves there, moves towards uh, what you can say the as a striker to play as a striker in the middle of the pitch. So you know he is doing number eight, number six, number ten, number nine, uh, number eleven as well. You know there he is doing so many roles. You know, uh, you talk about players you know doing multiple roles, but you know what you can, what they do is means you know once we talk about versatility, versatility, what uh, what we mean is uh, he plays uh, he you know one game he can play as a number six, one game he can play as a number eight, one game he can play as a number ten. But what he does is he does everything in a single game itself, and he is doing this mm-hmm. over the season. You know. Means every game, you know, he is doing number six, number eight, number ten, number number nine, number seven. He's winger. He's uh, you know uh, a mezala. He's a but uh, he's a ball carrying midfielder. He's a striker. He's doing everything every game in in every game. You know, not like one game he's playing as a striker, one game he's playing as a winger. He's doing everything in each game, and he's continuing. He has continued. You know, the, at least you know this point. So hopefully, you know, I think so. You know, you guys would get what I was trying to say. I was a little bit uh, excited and overhyped. And probably you know I might have reason my voice. So, but I hope that you got the point. So that's why you now I want to talk about Bernardo Silva because, uh, you know, I had not seen you know, someone yet who wanted to leave in the summer, who wanted to leave in the transfer window, and just you know three four months later, you know, he is doing. He is become you know what you can say integral part of the team, and if he is not there, you know, uh, uh, against Leipzig, you know, he was not there, and Man City was really struggling. Uh, they really you know uh, he has become a core part, you know now. And uh, so yeah, that is what I would like to say. Probably you know, if I get chance, I would also again write about him. Uh, him and Demar Gray, you know, are my two main targets to write about player. Uh, you know, player, uh, player, player. Uh, what do you say? Article about. So these two, you know, I really want to talk, write about them. But because of ISL, I'm not getting much time to write about them. Uh, and about talking about Man City, you know, Bernardo Silva is really. Uh, then there's Phil Foden, uh, who has been exceptionally well as well. Uh, Jack Grealish, uh, Jack Grealish. Uh, am I? Do you remember? You know, you sent me a post about you know Jack Grealish being a hundred billion flop. Uh, I uh. don't think he's a flop. He's a great player. He's an excellent player. Uh, the only problem with him is, is City is not his team. You know, because uh, there are a lot of players around uh, around him. You know, there are a lot of players who are you know of good quality. Uh, what the problem is, Joao Cancelo. You know, he's a right back, but he plays a left back. Uh, so what he does is he likes to move inward. You know he likes to play in those half spaces or he likes to move centrally. And the same thing is with Jack Grealish. You know he he does not have a good left foot. So what he does is he cuts inside. And what that happens is uh, both the players, you know, Joao Cancelo and Jack Grealish, both are playing the same area and they are kind of you know uh, obstructing each other. Uh, so that why you know Jack Grealish is really you know what you can say they cannot leave Joao Cancelo because uh, we all know how good players is. But they can leave Jagglis. Like instead of Jagglis, they can play Sterling. You can you know play on the flank. You can hold that hold that width. He can play Phil Foden. Uh, so that's why you know he is currently not getting much game time as under Guardiola. But I think you know Guardiola will do something with him. Uh, probably he would play on the right flank, or probably you know he would play as a what you can say a striker. Strike. Manchester like to play striker, but he can probably play as a false nine. So man, Pep you know probably would like to would would probably do something with him. Just give him time. He's not a flop. He's a great player. But you know, just he has to, you know, what you can say. When uh, when you join a, a big team, for Manchester United, when you go to a very big team like Pep, uh, Manchester United, Manchester United, it might take some time. It might take half a season. It might take a season. But uh, I believe that Jack Lee is not a flop. It's just that the system is not right for him. Exactly. We'll move on to Chelsea now. Uh, of course, Chelsea they really started well initially, winning all these games, winning three nil, three nil. But uh, you know they have suffered a small setback, a very small setback, of course, uh, when they lost three two to West Ham, then a draw against Manchester United, and uh, you know a few a few weeks before that a draw against Burnley, I guess. Hmm. So such you know 
those draws at a loss in between you know hampered their momentum a uh, very little bit uh, but uh, you know that might actually cost them because liverpool and city they are really chasing that title so if chelsea get their things together and if romelu lukaku of course uh, he's a big player they've signed this year if he comes back in form again then uh, chelsea might you know get back on track and of course tuchel he knows how to do his job again another setback they uh, drew against zenit 3 all mm. in the fa champions league we can understand if it's a 0 all or 1 nil draw but it was a 3 all draw uh, so a lot of questions are being asked but of course Tuchel knows his job, and uh, he's got a title behind him. Uh, like we all know, they won the Champions League last season, and uh, they are among the you know top leaders in the Premier League title race too. So if they you know move uh, move on from that and uh, concentrate on on their next games, of course, uh, the few games that they have to play uh, next, uh, they are the easy fixtures in form of uh, Leeds, Everton, and uh, I guess Aston Villa and Brighton. So. just have to uh, you know make sure that they don't mess it up this time and since i mean you know i'm assuming that chelsea defeats these teams and if they do then uh, chelsea will be the you know table leaders again uh, uh speaking about chelsea you know uh, uh, i think so that uh, that one thing that you can actually do is get his front three sorted uh, who is main front three what is plan a is with the front three because every game you know uh, I, i feel like you know uh, not every game but you know probably after two three games Uh, one game I see Havertz, uh, Hudson Odoi, and Mount starting. Another game I see Pulisic, I see Werner, uh, Hudson Odoi, and uh, Zia starting. Another game I see Kai Havertz, Mount, and Zia starting. You know, uh, this cannot be the thing. You know, where you change your front three every week, or you know, every two weeks you can. This you cannot do that. Uh, look at Liverpool, look at Man City. They only change their front three if they think that this is a, a weaker side, or this is they or they have to rotate a squad because they have some uh, fixture. Uh, in the midweek in the Champions League, so they they just rotate this and but even after they're rotating, you know their game plan remain the same. Uh, that's uh, even though the individual is different, what they do is same on the pitch. But with Chelsea, you know, uh, he first I would like to say is get that fun three sorted, and as you say that they have you know uh, what you can say face some hiccups. Uh, Burnley draw against Burnley, loss against West Ham, draw against Saint Saint Peter Saint Petersburg. I think it was because of the loss of the, the Ben Chilwell. Uh, who plays as a left, left back in that back five? Uh, him and Reece James, you know, they were uh, a great partnership. And after, because of that, you know, Reece James is also struggling as well. Uh, we all, uh, uh, with Reece James, you know, when both both of them were playing, they were both scoring goals. And right now, Reece James is also not scoring goals as well. It is the other players, you know, front three who has to do all the thing. Yeah, and the one thing is uh, only, you know, the only problem that I see is just get that front three sorted. Get your plan A, plan B, plan C, whatever it is. On the pitch, I think you did you know multiple times because you might win Champions League, but you need to have consistency to win Premier League competition like Premier League because you have to be consistent mm-hmm. for thirty eight thirty eight games in cup games. You know you are playing just the, the the teams once or twice, so you know you can probably have a surprise uh, surprise for them. But in Premier League, you know every week you are getting watched every week you are they they are because they know that they are going to play Chelsea, so you know they have a lot of you know videos to analyze. They have a lot of uh, time to prepare for you. Uh, so yeah, the only thing I would get to, like to say is get consistency in the front three, uh, mm. pick same players, uh, have a have a plan of attack, and execute it week by week. Obviously, uh, you have to do some tweaks, but uh, you know you don't have to change your entire plan. You just have to add one or add or drop one or two one or two few things every week. So yeah, that's that's it. You know, other than that, I don't have much problem with Chelsea going on, and I think you know uh, Chelsea, Man City, and Liverpool they are a strong you know a strong three. What you can say a triangle of tight tight race. uh they are three strong candidates for the title and yeah that's it yeah so uh, that's it that's what we have for you in this uh, video don't you want to talk about uh, real la liga uh, you know i think la liga should be a separate video altogether because uh, this video has been premier league centered and uh, that's what i wanted to be next video we will talk about la liga and uh, then we'll talk a bit about ucl we'll talk about barcelona's downfall and uh, Yeah, a lot. Uh, you know, teams in Serie A too. So we'll keep that for the next video. And uh, that's what it from our side. This was a Premier League centered video, and uh, we'll see you in the next. Peace out.